I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. Mario, let's get down and dirty and talk about the magic of water here, my friend. Mm. Thank you so much for having me look at first. I'm a huge fan of your work and I'm thrilled to be here. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. So I want to start out by asking you about a vision that you had in meditation to create a 100% natural health-related business. I always find it interesting when people like me, this happens, my best ideas usually come in meditation. So I'm curious how that went down for you. Yeah, it was really, really remarkable. I uh, It was kind of uh, a long time ago already. So I had a pretty uh, successful business before that, but you know, I've kind of always was very passionate about health and wellness. And I was always, I always knew that Our bodies have this incredible innate intelligence. They know how to repair itself. But I was always kind of researching and trying to find ways to not improve, but to help that process in a powerful way. So I wasn't in that kind of part of thing. I was in something completely different. But I kind of meditated on what should I do? Should I go into maybe supplements or should I go into some technology or something that will help people heal or get better. And I actually entered into this incredible bliss state, which kind of lasted for kind of half an hour. And I was, I was just super happy and, and connected and everything. And I, to be honest, I just kind of left it there and went on with my life. And not three weeks later, I actually bumped into and and kind of got introduced to a person who already had an amazing, an amazing product that really helped and could help a lot of people. But they didn't have the skills. They didn't know how to scale it. They they didn't have these kind of know-how how to do it. So I was thrilled how, you know, the universe worked. And I jumped to the opportunity. And when I entered into this company, I kind of increased the sale exponentially because, you know, I came from advertising world. I own my um, advertising agency and a production house. And I increased the sales of that product by 900% in three months. Damn, I need to yeah. hire you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, it was really spectacular. And then this, this was just kind of an opening. I was so inspired by the whole thing because this thing really helped people. Then I kind of started to kind of gather all the things that truly, truly help people. And through it, I helped thousands of people. And this was incredibly gratifying experience because, you know, when you change people's lives, that's something huge. I mean, you cannot live in a better way. You cannot serve in a better way when you make people feel better. I mean, this is, I mean, this is exactly what you're doing. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. So after a while, you know, I did this for, I don't know, eight, nine years, something like that. Then I kind of decided that it was time to move on because, you know, I really kind of brought it to a very high level and I sold the whole company to Walgreens. And then I was kind of thinking, okay, if I'm ever going to involve myself in something, again, it would really need need to be for the highest good of all in terms of to help plants, animals, people, environment, so that it really has a planetary impact, something that truly is for the highest good of everything and everyone. And exactly the same way how universe works. I was very soon after that introduced to Dr. Eric Larker and Dolph Zantinge, which are the founders of NLM Water. And very soon into the introduction, I could not only sense, but see there is something extraordinarily amazing about this water. And since, you know, I did many in in this uh, years of having this natural pharmaceutical company, I did many uh, clinical trials and did many things there. I had a lot of experience in that particular area. So I went deep into human studies with NLM water. 
So did double blind placebo control studies and everything just to prove that something biologically remarkable happens when people drink this water, but not just people, you know, we have animals, we have plants and the whole environmental impact of this water is extraordinary. Agriculture impact of this water is extraordinary. So we're all going to, we're going to pass through all of those details because awesome. this truly is uh, something spectacular. And to be honest, I am deeply grateful to be part of this project. I feel, and in all of us in, in our company, we feel that we're serving this water. It's not the other way around. Because when you feel that and see and witness, we really had more than several oh my God moments in our studies. And when you kind of witness this, you cannot feel that you own it. If you know what I mean, you feel that you're like a part of something amazing that's happening. And you just want to do your very best to kind of get it out there. I love you. I love your passion and I love your value system. You know, it, it took me some time in life um, in my prior careers, which were creative and wonderful in their own unique ways. But um, after some time, I actually just sold a business too uh, last week. So congratulations on yours. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't sell mine to Walgreens. So I'm not, probably not sitting as pretty as you were, but you know, got it done. But what I realized is there were, I don't know, it's almost the way that we're brought up in school and just the way Western culture, I don't want to say the culture indoctrinates you, but for lack of a better term, it's just what we're led to believe, you know, speaking by your accent, I'm guessing you're not from New Jersey uh, or America anywhere. But for, for us here, it's like get an education so you can go out and make money. You know, I mean, that's like the overarching kind of theme. And it took me until I was probably in my late 30s until I realized doing a career for money only is very limiting in terms of the satisfaction that uh, one can derive from it, right? And so yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. The work that I do now, when I get paid money to do what I do now, I'm still shocked. <laughs> you know, It's like, this is actually a job, talking to people like you, doing the other work that I do, speaking on stage, writing my book, things that I'm working on. It's like, they're mostly things I would do for free, apart from the administrative stuff that for anyone is kind of a drag that has to go into supporting the business part of it. But the actual work and the vision is solely based on helping people, you know, and, and that's what you discovered. So I think that's, there's a really important lesson there above and beyond water. I definitely, I definitely agree with you. Definitely. For all of us to find something that feels good in your heart. I mean, that's why I feel so grateful. I get messages just like you from people that are, I mean, opening my Instagram DMs today, I don't know how many there were. I don't want to exaggerate. There were probably four or five messages this morning that said something to the effect of, wow, thank you so much. Your content has really impacted my life. And I had a question about this or that, you know, it's usually how it goes. And that's all day, every day. And those are only the people that take the time to actually say that, you know, there's probably yes. thousands of people listening they go, oh, this is really cool. And it has some positive impact on them. And they're not, for whatever reason, um, inspired to let me know, right? So uh, I love that um, that you share that value. And you've discovered really the golden key to life, which is doing something vocationally that also fuels your heart and gives you a sense of purpose. Um, but I, I wanted to point out one other thing about that. Uh, when I interviewed... Um, let me see. It was episode 431, Eric and Dolph. And I didn't get it too much into their personal life, but I sensed that they had money from something else. <laughs> you know, they weren't like two broke guys in their upper middle ages that were like, Ooh, we're going to cash in on this water thing we discovered. No. It seemed yeah. like it was more of a passion project. And that helped me kind of buy into the legitimacy of the product and the NLM of products, because they really are otherworldly and kind of hard to believe. And so when something's hard to believe, you're always looking for the sales angle in there. Like, all right, who's in this for the money? And like you, it didn't seem like either of them were that concerned about the money. They're more concerned about the impact. Was my assessment correct? Most definitely. I have to tell you a story how they got involved because it's really an amazing story. They actually were very kind of worried where the world was going. They actually wanted to invest in finding 
I don't know, it's going to sound kind of crazy, but they wanted to find the secret to life. Like how to, what can we change in the our fundamental understanding of the world? They didn't even kind of go for, for a product or anything. It was just kind of, okay, we need to find something that would help the world. That's where it all started. And to be honest, I can tell you one thing for me as well. When I kind of got introduced with Dolphin Eric, I actually funded, I wasn't even a part of it. I just funded one study just because I believed in this. I believed in this so much that this could really change people's lives. And then I kind of, in while, because I have this very particular skill set, I kind of got involved to help the whole project. And it really is just like you mentioned, it, when you do something that you would do for free, that's the way to live. Right, right. You mentioned this uh, yeah. just a, a minute before. This is what I love. When you do something that you would do, anyhow, you would do it for free. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Then you know that you're doing, this is a dharmic way of living. You know that you are uh, living from your heart, so to yeah. speak. Well, it's, then it's everything funny. falls together. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I'm, you know, we're kind of diverting here, but I think there's some real value in this for people, even if they're listening to this because they want to learn about water. So I've done so many podcasts on water. I'm obsessed with it and I could talk about it forever. But to the point of doing something for free, when I first started my podcast, which will be in a month, it'll be eight years ago. Oh. And I started reaching out to people, you know, sending emails, going to events and asking people uh, to be on my podcast as guests. I was shocked that people were willing to sit down and talk to me for sometimes two or three hours. And these were people uh, for whom their consulting fees were probably hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per hour. So I remember in the beginning going, and I wasn't getting paid, you know, myself in the beginning, it was just all for free. And I funded it myself. But I remember thinking I would pay this person 500 bucks to sit down and talk to them for an hour. And then eventually, I'm actually getting paid to sit down and talk to them. You know, it's like, not only would I do it for free, in many cases, I feel like I would actually come out of pocket just to be able to spend time with that person and learn from them. So it's, it's really funny when you put your passion and your heart and just caring about humanity first, the universe sort of opens its arms and starts to avail you with all of these incredible relationships and other opportunities. So that, that's very cool. Um, okay, so you met the guys, you met the founders, you got involved with yeah. the company. Uh, is, is that the first point at which you got interested in the bigger picture and the larger conversation around water or was water something in your own health journey that you already were learning about and conscious of and had some degree of, of passion for? To be honest, no. That was the first moment where I really kind of, with my eyes opened. Up until that moment, this is now a couple of years uh, ago, but up until that moment, I didn't realize what water is. I didn't realize how extraordinarily important it is for our overall health and wellness. I mean, when you look at it, our life is water. 99% of our molecules are water. So this is the most fundamental level of our existence, purely physically. So the structure of that 99%, the state in which this 99% exists determines the quality of our lives to the dot. And our research clearly showed that when you change water, your, your whole biology follows. So this was, uh, this was like a very eye-opening for me. I realized that there are whole worlds hidden in water. There are many, there are several scientists, I'm gonna, not going to say many, there are several scientists that were playing with water in various ways, like they were kind of running low voltage through water while fish were inside. And they're actually, just by changing uh, that, the, the genetic structure of those fish started to change. So when you change water, everything starts changing. You know, people understand like when you eat something, it becomes your heart, it becomes your muscle, it becomes your skin, it becomes your bone. But with water is actually much, much deeper. And we're drinking two liters to three liters of water every day. We are replacing 
this 99% in our body constantly. And when you're replacing it with the way water was intended to be, you're upgrading your biology more than significantly. Amen. This is exactly, yeah, this is exactly what all of our research clearly proved. So we are actually electromagnetical in nature when you look at it. And, you know, I always kind of remember uh, Nikola Tesla, famous uh, scientist, said, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And water is a broadband absorber, receiver, transmitter, and storer of energy, frequency, and vibration. And it's uh, therefore so essential, essential. And when you, this is what Eric and Dolph kind of figured out. They zeroed in into water. When they started changing the water, if, you know, uh, in early days, they had this huge uh, greenhouse and they did all of these experiments on plants. And they realized when they change water, biophoton emissions change dramatically. So when you water, for instance, tomatoes, we, we did this experiment where uh, every single living thing exudes light. And you, you need to have very specific equipment that is very sensitive and can actually capture every single biophoton. The more biophotons any biological system exudes, more vitality it has. So we actually compared uh, tomatoes water with regular water and tomatoes water with NLMO water. And tomatoes water with an LMO water exude 60% more light. They have 60% more vitality. Usually people always go to the chemical side of things, but we are talking about energetics. This is the most fundamental level of our existence. And when you change that, everything else changes. Oh man, that's so cool. Yeah, thinking about water that's structured uh, or living water, coherent water, which I'll have you define in a moment, I think many people listening will already be kind of aware with that terminology, but I think of water in its natural state, not as a wet, clear liquid that we call H2O, but a liquid crystalline carrier of information, right? Exactly. When you start to, when you start to change the relationship with water and how you understand water, then it's interactions within our bodies and within plant life and animal life. Um, starts to take on a whole different meaning and becomes much more interesting. And you mentioned um, some of the researchers. I think many people by now are aware of uh, Dr. Masaru Emoto, uh, the famous book, Hidden Messages in Water. And uh, I've encouraged people to check that out. And we'll put that in the show notes, which, by the way, will be lukestory.com slash Mario. And uh, I'll mention that again elsewhere. But Dr. Emoto's work, super cool. We've also had on the podcast, um, well, he died before we could have him on the podcast, but I did feature uh, Dr. Gerald Pollack, yeah. uh, who discovered the, the fourth phase of water or exclusion zone water. Fascinating guy like you, just committed to doing good in the world and using his laboratory in Washington to discover unbelievable things that we didn't know about the nature of water and the way they interact with biology. Uh, but I think my favorite of all, and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with her to some degree, is Veda Austin, Yes, <laughs> who, who was on the show. And I mean, I've done uh, 500 or so interviews at this point, and I've talked to some brilliant, fascinating, lovely people like yourself and many others. I got to say, if you put a gun to my head and said, give me your top five podcast out of the 500, Veda Austin would definitely be in the top five, if not like number one or two. Uh, the conversation we had around water was so enlightening and expansive and just absolutely mind-blowing. Um, in fact, I should go back and listen to it again. I just remember sitting with her and I was just mesmerized by her understanding of water and the research she does, um, which totally flies in the face against the traditional scientific analysis of water that it's this molecule and that molecule and it's a wet, clear liquid that hydrates things, right? It's like the studies she's done where she freezes water, for example, and I'll encourage people to go through the show notes and find that episode. But I mean, so many of them are just incredibly fascinating. But the one that really got me, I think, just because I'm an old school rock and roller from, from back in the day, is she, well, what she does is she takes these Petri dishes and she pours whatever the source water happens to be, all kinds of different sources. 
and then she'll uh, write something next to the water or say something to the water, et cetera, very much akin to Dr. Emoto's work, and then freezes the water for about four minutes, pours off the excess liquid part of the water, and what she's left with is a Petri dish uh, of an ice crystal, essentially, or ice crystals. Yeah. And the one that really got me is one that looks like a staircase. And she explained to me that how that was created was by placing the liquid water in a Petri dish, putting Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven on her music player, oh, and then man. freezing the water for four minutes, gets it out, and the water goes, oh, we know that song. That's a stairway. I mean, like, you can't refute the magic in that. You would have to be an extremely intellectually limited and skeptical person to not, and that's just one of th literally thousands that she's done. So through conversations like that and Gerald Pollack and reading the work of Dr. Emoto, uh, my relationship with water, which has always been primary since I was a little kid, maybe it's because I'm a Scorpio, I'm a water sign, I don't know, but mm. I want to be near and interacting with water all the time. When I go on road trips and I'm watching my GPS map, I'm takes everything I have to not pull over when I see a body of water because I want to go get in it or at least look at it. You know, I'm just obsessed with water. I do all kinds of different tricks with it and stuff like that. Uh, but even with the knowledge I had about water after those years and just my innate passion for and about water, that interview with Veda Austin, I knew water was a carrier of information, right? And so I knew that it had a certain intelligence. But the way she works with water in her research indicates that water not only carries information, like you could input a crystal with some frequencies or something like that, as you described earlier, but that water is actually living to the point that it communicates with us and has its own innate intelligence. And again, it, you know, many people listening go, oh, that sounds ridiculous. But I'm telling you, listen to that podcast, look at her work. Try to explain that with your rational mind. It's impossible. There's something going on that is just beyond our linear comprehension. It truly is the magic of consciousness. And so for me, after all of these years, it's just like, God, I thought I was passionate about water before. And then you guys come along. And by the way, I'm sure you're aware, but those listening, if you go on the Analemma Instagram, or no, I'm sorry, it's on Veda Austin's Instagram. She did uh, a photograph after water that was treated with the analemma wand. And of course, it's this miraculously beautiful crystalline structure uh, that was created. It's just, just fascinating. But I'm like now even more obsessed with water than I ever have been before because you guys created something that, and we're going to go into this deeply. And of course, there's a lot more in the first episode I did with your two partners. But you guys created a way to structure water or make water coherent. And there are a lot of uh, devices around that can do that. There's Natural Action is a great company. Um, the Leela uh, Quantum Blocks can do that. The Soma Vedics. I mean, I've been experimenting with all kinds of stuff and I love all of those. But what's interesting about what you guys have done is that you've been able to prove that after water is structured with the Analemma products, that it remains that way for at least five years despite interference that would make other waters become incoherent again. So that to me is like, what the, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to swear too much on my show, but what the F are you guys up to? It's like, that's just insane to me. So having said all that, and I apologize for my rant, I want to make sure and give you space to share all of your wisdom and expertise here. But for those that don't know what we're talking about, if they just tuned into this podcast for the first time and haven't heard my other dozen or so shows on water, maybe give us a simple breakdown of the difference between a chaotic or unstructured water versus structured and coherent water. And then we'll just go from there. We'll go into how the Analemma products work. And then I really want to cover all of the research because since our last conversation, you guys have done tons of very legitimate studies and that's really exciting to me, even though I already know it works. The studies are important so that people know, like, if I'm going to spend 180 bucks or whatever on this wand, like, I really want to know that it works. So let's start with coherent or structured water. Awesome. 
So we kind of collected water samples from all over the place, and we found out that uh, water currently exists in what we call chaotic state. So what does that mean? That uh, H2O molecules in drinking water, they behave chaotically. They crash into each other constantly. But since all of this happens on an atomic level, nobody really is even aware of that. Nobody pays attention to it. There is a way to bring order back into that chaos. This is what coherent water is. You mentioned several other uh, technologies that create some form of coherence. And every almost every single one of them actually does that. So the water enters into some form of coherent state. But in our experience, we kind of really tested a lot. Water stays in this coherent state between a couple of minutes and day and a half tops. Then water goes back into the chaos. We're using this very special, um, let's call it method, that has five different stages and it lasts one whole year. When water passes this fifth stage, it doesn't go back to chaos at any moment. And we really tried to push it out of its state of coherence. We radiated it. We did all kinds of things to it, but it always held its structure. Just once water with just once treated with NLMA, we tested it now for five consecutive years. Every single year, we're just going to add another because you know we want to stick by the hardcore science, but having observed what we've observed, it will not lose its state of coherence. This stability creates resilience, actually extraordinary resilience in, in all biological systems. It's uh, interesting that we, when we did our plant research and tomato research, it's actually progressive. After three generations, you know, we planted, replanted with seeds, uh, tomatoes. And after three generations, uh, tomatoes almost don't need no pesticides. Wow. They become so resilient. Wow. Okay, I'm going to create a model here. <laughs> Just getting creative. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay, you have, uh, you have two mothers. They've each only had uh, analemma or structured water their entire life. They each have a baby. One's a boy, one's a girl. They're breastfeeding that baby from structured water. Of course, much of milk is water. There's some fat and other constituents, but the majority of it's water. And then those two babies only drink structured water their entire life until they're adults. And then they mate and then they have a baby that's made entirely of 99% molecularly structured water. What would happen? Let's find out. And where you guys are going, you know, I know your world vision is very broad and really brave that you want to structure the water on the entire planet. And I'm all for that. And that's one of the reasons we're doing uh, this podcast. So that's my thought experiment uh, based on your tomato experiment. But a uh, question that I have is a geeky one around when you say, okay, we've tested these other um, devices and they structure the water, but after a day or so it goes away. And then for five years, you guys have been testing yours to see that it remains coherent, even after you've exposed it to all of these disruptive uh, influences. How do you actually measure the level of coherence in water? What's, what's the mechanism of measurement there? Actually, in the beginning, we did near-infrared, ultraviolet visual spectroscopy uh, and biophoton. We love biophotons in the beginning because if you change the water and you expose it to a biological system, if biological system starts to exude more light, that means that actual profound change happens. So it's not a short process. It's always a long process because we want to be 100% sure that it works. So we, we always test it on biological systems, not just uh, through kind of observing that the change in the structure of water itself uh, happened, but that it actually has a profound effect on biology. So up until now, there is no device that you can kind of use on the spot and say, this one is a co coherent water, this one isn't. I mean, of course, you can, people can do taste tests immediately. Can you see the difference? But we're sticking to hardcore science. So the only way that, way that we are using is that we're testing it on biological systems and to see what actually happens there. Then we know if something has, biophoton is uh, very, biophoton research is very good there because you can immediately see after rather short period of time, you could see the change. 
if it starts to exude more light, more biophotons, something changed. And, uh, okay. you know, yeah, we can actually uh, kind of make a um, first entrance into the human studies that we did, because we wanted to see what's the correlation between uh, a vitality of plants and vitality of humans. And since light is very much, biophotons are very much connected to the energy, mitochondrial energy, this is where we wanted to venture. So we did a double blind placebo control study where we measured ATP levels in humans. So adenosine triphosphate, the primary energy currency of the cell, which is directly responsible for powering the majority of cellular processes in our body, including muscle contraction, neuroimpulse transmission, biochemical reactions, every heartbeat, every breath depends on ATP. And, you know, uh, scientists now agree that decrease in the mitochondrial function is the key cause of cellular aging. So we wanted to see if the mitochondrial function will increase when people drink this water. So we employed luciferase, which is an enzyme that catalyzes light production in bioluminescent organisms. And due to its extraordinary sensitivity, you can actually measure ATP levels in humans. So we did a first test where we measured ATP levels in people. It was double-blind placebo control study. And then people drank a liter and a half of NLM water for two months without changing anything else in the world. So they didn't change their diets, they didn't change their exercise regime, everything else stayed the same. And then we did the second test. And uh, the results were that we had more than significant increase. We had 20% increase in overall mitochondrial energy of the body over the placebo. When you count in the placebo, that's 26%. So just by drinking the water, the entire mitochondrial energy of your body increased by 26%. So if you give your body just a couple of percent, it will definitely do something with it. And we are talking about real energy. Not so, so this clearly showed that the ability of mitochondria to convert fats and sugar, which are primary fuel, into energy increased exponentially. That's insane, dude. I mean, ima imagine if you hadn't done that study. <laughs> Just, I always think of marketing, you know, because I work with all these brands and some of them are great at marketing and some of them are less than great. The ones that are great always have research to back up their claims. But imagine if you had no research to back that up and you were like, hey, put I have my wand right here. Actually, I'll show it for those watching the video. This is the um, quartz wand filled with mother water. And we'll learn what that is in a moment. It's got this little steel. Uh, case that it goes into for those listening it looks basically like a i don't know a sharpie like it's about that big like a big pen but imagine marketing this right and you're like yeah uh we think if you just like take this and stir your water every day that you'll have a 26 percent increase in mitochondrial function and atp production i mean that would sound like such bullshit if you guys didn't actually you know what i mean like who would believe yeah that? yeah yeah but this is, the, this is exactly why we're investing in science, because we understand that it will kind of look crazy. For people, it's kind of people who don't understand the importance of water, who don't understand that, the, uh, like, that, that this is the essential, the, the, the very fundament of life. It's kind of far-fetched. But that's why we wanted to do this, so that everybody can know and will know that if you use this water, this effect will happen. So I agree with you. It would be kind of ridiculous to even mention I mean, this. I can just see people on Twitter, you know, attacking. <laughs> yeah, Twitter's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter's like the most toxic of all the social media platforms. I, I try to use it with, uh, you know, some discipline because it's so negative. But that's the kind of thing someone will make a claim on there. And then you have all these trolls that come on and claim that it's bullshit. But me personally, like, I go with ha with all this stuff. I go kind of half intuition. And that intuition is also based on my level of trust in the integrity of whoever the inventor or purveyor of a particular product or service is. And I have a pretty decent bullshit meter because I used to be one uh, when I was younger. I've grown out of that, thankfully, at least at 99% uh, on a good day. But there's also a part of me that's like, okay, like I trust this person, but even if that person is integrous and, and they're not lying intentionally, they could also just be hopefully ignorant and mistaken, right? Well, we think it does this and we're all excited, but can you actually show that? And so I'm like, I guess, you know, mostly based on intuition, gut feeling, and just 
a vibe of something, but that's not enough. I, I also want to see like, okay, I think I'm feeling this, but placebo is so powerful yes. within myself. I want to see it, but I also want to go on their website and see that they've put some, some of that profit they're hopefully making into research. And, you know, for anyone listening that has a brand in wellness, um, you know, I know not everyone's uh, profit margins allow for expensive studies. Um, sounds like you guys have been able to foot the bill for those. They're not cheap if you do them right. But I just want to impress upon people how important it is as a as a purveyor of a product or service to be able to show some data, some science that it's actually working. And also just as a consumer, something that I always do is I look right on the website and I'm hoping there's a tab that says not just buy here, buy here, buy here, but there's a, you know, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. What I want to see is a tab that says research and science, right? So I can get in there and I'm not terribly intellectual, but I can make my way around some studies and see if there's something legitimate there or not. Um, so kudos to you guys for, you know, actually spending the money and the time and effort to do that because it's it's really important. And the cause, you know, if your ultimate cause is restructuring and loving the entire ecosystem of water on the planet, then that's a very worthy cause that deserves research. You know, as as you scale what you're doing, which I'd love to talk about it a little later, I have that in my notes. I mean, if you're going to get large agricultural operations on board with this, they're definitely going to want to see some data, you know, if they're going to install a, you know, $500,000 system on a massive, you know, agricultural operation or something like that. This is exactly what we wanted to do. That's why we're investing in double-blind placebo control studies. And just so you know, even before we launched, you know, people usually kind of spend like a year or two years tops before they kind of launch something. 15 years we've invested. 15 years in research before we even contemplated we are going to go out. Because we were kind of... Uh, weird in that way to be honest we kind of really want to stand behind what we say and then we kind of decided okay now it's the time and we didn't stop there uh, just so you know we're investing on so many levels if we mentioned agriculture study now we're doing a huge agriculture study Ooh, this is exciting this we is. want to change the whole agriculture game because it needs to change. The world is really in a bad spot uh, when we talk about agriculture. Just when you, if you're gonna, we're gonna talk about glyphosate and the whole thing a bit later, but when you look at it, the kind of nutrient density or spinach 10 years ago had 80% more nutrients than spinach today. Only 10 years ago? That's appalling. That's crazy. I've heard I've heard stats like that, but it's like, oh, a hundred years ago, a carrot. Had no, 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 no. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's that, still that getting worse. God, it really is not good in oh, that particular dude. way. So, just to, to to say, kind of our, our also a research that we did a couple of years back, because we knew that we need to revitalize the soil. The soil is extraordinarily important, and we are polluting our soil and killing the microbiome of soil on such rampant rate that it's really becoming critical all over the planet. So anyhow, uh, what we did is that we took a completely destroyed piece of land by gl glyphosate, by all kinds of toxins. So it's completely infertile. This land cannot bear anything. And we watered one part of it with regular water and one part with NLM water. And the part that was water with an alema water as a control, basically nothing happened. Everything uh, stayed the same. But the part that was water with an alema water, there was a huge explosion in the biodiversity of the microbiome. So wow. much so that the, that the bacteria in the soil started to suck CO2 out of the atmosphere into the soil where it actually belongs. Because what? CO2 is the fuel for plants. They actually inhale uh, CO2 and they exhale oxygen in the whole kind of process of things. But uh, the land became fertile 
in very short period of time. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, usually when the rain falls uh, on the soil, the, the minerals go into deeper layers. But with analemma, when you water the soil with analemma or that depleted soil, there was a huge retainment of the minerals in the top layer where plant can actually get the nutrients inside the plant. What? So that was one of our like oh my god mind exploding moments in our research just by watering the destroyed basically infertile and we're not talking about regular infertile dead land we revitalized it in a very short period of time we are not talking about okay you need to water for a year no this all happened in a very short period of time which tells us that there's this extraordinary intelligence in nature everywhere. We just wait for us to give it a hand, so to speak, and it revitalizes, it revitalizes immediately. So this water really has a profound effect on it. That's why I'm saying we are the ones serving it. Our whole thing is like I'm uh, Dolphin Eric probably mentioned this in the last podcast. Our whole mission statement is to create, to make all of the bodies of water on this planet coherent again. We already developed this eco friendly technology that we want to install in the wells of the biggest rivers because we know that life down the stream would thrive. All of that water would end up in the ocean. Then the oceans would become coherent. Oh my God, dude. I see. I love, I love that you think big like that. That's, that's the way I think. And I might not be able to see some of these things that I think of and you think of, they might not come to fruition during my lifetime this time, but if I managed to have a couple kids. It might happen in their lifetime, you know? But you know what? I'm confident, Luke. I'm confident that this will happen in our lifetime. Okay, good. I'm going to hold that then. Because it's time. The world is changing, however it looks on the outside. I believe, I truly believe that Mother Earth is the hidden voice of this particular project. I believe there is this intelligence of life that is running the show, so to speak. And however grim things look on the outside, I think that everything is happening uh, the way it should. And if you do your thing and I do mine, we're just a part of this symphony happening. And I truly believe that's why we want to bring it to the governmental level so that governments will want to get involved. Just like I mentioned, there is huge issue, uh, especially in America uh, and the rest of the world, of course, with, with uh, land stop being fertile. It just cannot deliver the quality of food necessary. And this is such a simple way to revitalize the soil and so that you make it nutrient dense, that the food becomes nutrient dense, but not only nutrient dense, we're talking about vitality. We're talking about the energy level of the fruit, which is, which like exudes a light in exponentially higher level than with regular water. Amazing. So this is our kind of intention to change the whole agriculture thing. We are actually, as I mentioned, we're deep now in the rather big agriculture study because we know that we need to increase yield and shelf life because this is what these guys kind of only think about. They think about in yield and shelf life. And we know that when you, not only you are going to create fruits and veggies that are going to be packed with vitality, they're also going to increase yield and shelf life. Wow. Because it has uh, more vitality, more biophotons, more light in it. It will stand, it will stay fresh longer. And this is something which is extraordinarily observable. And this is, that's how we want to kind of, this is our intention, how to change the whole agriculture game. And hopefully all the agriculture giants will uh, join in, will realize the potential there. And then again, everybody will get the benefit. Man, I love this. It's very timely too. Uh, you know, I've been more focused on helping people improve their spiritual lives and physical health and working kind of person to person rather than going, zooming further out and getting involved in environmental issues and things like that. Um, my belief is that 
raising the consciousness of each individual has the net effect of raising the consciousness of the population. When you have a, po a population with higher consciousness, they make better choices for themselves and for the planet. So I'm kind of a, a bottom up environmentalist more so than a top down. However, I was just in Costa Rica with an organization that I'm starting to do some work with called Walking Softer. And they have uh, just purchased a property there. It's a couple thousand acres. And it's uh, formerly a, a cattle ranch that was not, you know, well maintained. And the land to me looked beautiful, but according to regenerative agricultural uh, analysis, it's it's very depleted and really needs some help. So the first part of that project is to bring the soil back and work on water retention. And as you're talking, I'm like, okay, we, we need to get an industrial sized analemma system in there. I mean, that would be a great test for that because they're this organization, the people behind it are so committed to doing everything. I mean, just down to the most minute detail, doing it the right way, you know, with, with the health of the soil first in mind, then the animals grazing on the land, the health of those animals, and of course the health of the, of the plant matter. So my, my question that I'm curious about, I mean, just thinking big here again. So if, if this wand here, the analemma wand, the home use one that I've had for, I don't know, a few months now, maybe a year or so, I use it on all of our water. I also use it in my ice bath. I just did that this morning because I just filled it up again. And it might have still been structured because the bottom half of the tank was still structured from the last time I did it, presumably. But I did it again just in preparation for our interview. I've also done my swimming pool with this. By hanging it on a string and putting it in the fountain, the recirculating fountain, I left it there for like 48 hours just so it touched as much of the water as possible. But still, it's just this one little wand. So if we're talking about a larger scale operation like an agricultural project or a municipal water source where there's a water a processing plant and you know they want to install kind of a what, what you now have the whole house unit, we're going to talk about that. But what does it look like in terms of scalability and how big would it if you had a 2000 acre ranch that had springs on it and you wanted to treat all of the irrigation water and the water for the livestock how feasible is it to for you guys to create the device or the technology in order to do that like how far out is that and what does it look like in terms of just its uh stature we're there really this is yeah we actually did this uh, all of this time we knew that this is if we want to change the world, we need to kind of create something which is scalable. So we already have this large agriculture uh, models. There is a huge uh, farm of Darlijing tea. Like, it's a really huge piece of land. And they actually have this irrigation system and they needed a monster. Okay. So it was kind of a challenge in the beginning because you have this huge water pressure. So uh, that's why we're kind of engineering, re-engineering to have something which work 100% and we actually create it. Wow. So now we can use it basically anywhere. Of course, it can, it can be custom made for any particular system because you have different piping system, different piping sizes and everything. Sure. But we already have technology that, is, that works similarly like whole house and lemma, but it's much bigger we just scale it so wow. we already developed that technology wow. and, and it can be employed anywhere this is our kind of end game to kind of get there and and then everybody will start to farm using this water Man. and then you know when you go to a regular supermarket you can kind of buy tomato or or mango or cucumber and you know that it has this vitality inside we need to, of course, change the whole uh, glyphosate and everything because this is a huge issue. Uh, your people are 100% aware of what glyphosate does and that it's actually an antibiotic which kills our microbiome. Yeah. Uh, so it's a huge, huge, huge issue. And when people are constantly uh, using it, and now there is a, a very recently a study done that like 99% of Americans have huge amounts of glyphosate in their urine. So it's a huge issue and we need to tackle it. But, you know, one thing at a time, we know that it's yeah. kind of a huge thing. We're doing 
one thing at a time. So just by doing this, if agriculture companies, large agriculture companies will start using the water, we are going to definitely have a extraordinarily positive impact on the quality of our foods. That is the next step. Having said this, I would like to make a connection to our next study uh, that we did on humans. It was a double blind placebo control study on microbiome. Oh, cool. People, we like, as humans, we like to think of ourselves as we are a single species, but nothing could be further from the truth. We are actually an entire ecosystem. We're living in symbiosis with trillions of these microorganisms and equilibrium, this equilibrium between our cells and this microbes is essential to our health. I know that your listeners are very, very aware of that. I mean, when I kind of started going on getting kind of a deep dive down the rabbit hole into microbiome, my mind was blown uh, so many times. Like to, to realize that there are up to 300 times more microbial genes than human genes is really extraordinary. These genes are creating enzymes which are dissolving food and getting us nutrients that wouldn't, we wouldn't have any access to otherwise. The connection between micro, the state of our microbiome and basically any area of our health, not just digestive health, immune health, cardiovascular health, neurological health, mental health, everything is basically directly impacted by the quality of our microbiome. Not to go into the whole story because it's really fascinating, to be honest to me. I'm, I'm kind of a, a geek around it because there, is, there are so many elements there. Uh, what we did, we measured what is called dysbiosis index of the microbiome. The dysbiosis index measures the degree of deviation within the microbiome, taking into account all the bacterial phyla and species and their weighing factor. So uh, what we did, double-blind placebo control study, uh, where we kind of first took a, a quote-unquote snapshot of the microbiome, and then uh, people were drinking uh, NLM water for a liter and a half of NLM water for two months without changing anything else in the world. And then we took another one. So what we saw is on average 17% improvement on the dysbiosis index over the placebo. But you know what's even more interesting? We wanted to see a deep dive into the pathogenic bacteria to see what's going to happen there because this water actually creates equilibrium. And exactly that happened. Pathogenic bacteria actually went down and the good bacteria went up. So this equilibrium happened. And this is exactly what we saw in all of our research. There is balancing effect happens because everything in nature has its place. All of this pathogenic bacteria, they're extraordinarily important, but we shouldn't have an overgrowth of them. So everything plays a part, but it's just a matter of balance. And this water retains or creates this balance. Wow. That's so interesting. And thinking about what you mentioned about, um, uh... The microbiome within our bodies, making it possible for us to assimilate nutrients from the food we eat. As, as you, I'm sure, know, that's the same thing that happens in soil with the biome of the soil, so that plants can then get the nutrients out of the soil, right? It's like exactly these symbiotic relationships are so interesting. And I'm glad that we're starting to think about the symbiosis in nature and getting out of this reductionist mindset that has everything in separation, right? I mean, many people, I mean, up until recently, I thought, okay, we've got to kill off all the bad bacteria in the gut. It's like, well, no, it has a, it has a place. It's just exactly. when it gets out of balance, you have a problem. And I'm sure it's the same way uh, with soil. Um, before we carry on, I want to let people know, because they're probably wondering like, okay, I'm on board. I want to get, get my hands on one of these things. If you guys go to coherent dash water.com and use the code luke5 you're going to get a five percent discount that's coherent dash water.com um, and you know as people listening might have guessed uh, by now i'm a huge fan and absolutely support people getting their hands on one of these things but i also want to talk about the new development about which i was extremely excited you mentioned earlier and that's the whole house unit and i have one here uh and it's gorgeous. It's not installed yet. And I'll tell you why. 
But for people watching on video, your source water goes in one side and the structured water comes out the other side. And this gets mounted, you know, next to your water input um, or water filter in my case. So I had a, I had a question around that. So I'm finally, after living in this house for a year and researching all of these different whole house uh, water filter systems, and there's so many out there, and many of them are great, and some are better than others. But based on my research, I'm going to be working with a company called Ofora Water, based in Santa Barbara. And I've known them for years. I used to go to their factory and uh, take their... They have this system uh, for hot tubs where they infuse oxygen into the water. <laughs> and I used to go up to Santa Barbara and soak in their cedar hot tub because it was, it's just the best thing ever. So my dream is to have one of those someday. But for now, we got to clean up the water. The water where I live in Texas is... Uh, absolutely atrocious, definitely not fit for consumption, and is so bad and toxic, in fact, that it's not even healthy to bathe in or put in your swimming pool or ice bath or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to install that system. I think in about a month, they're building it now. And I also want to make it clear for people that the Analemma products don't filter the water. So if you're using tap water that's full of fluoride and pharmaceuticals and God knows what else, that water, I'm guessing, would still be better than just regular tap water because at least it's coherent, but it's not removing the toxins. And I wanted to make that clear because someone sent me a message on social the other day like, oh, cool, so I'll just get this for the filter. I'm like, no, no, that's not the filter. You still have to have clean source water, whether that's you know a, a spring water or RO or whatever it is. So I'm just going to go all in and put this whole house system in. Now, the Ophora system already comes with a structuring unit and a restruct and a remineralizing unit, which is wonderful. And I'm going to leave that intact, but just because I'm next level, uh, I'm going to also install the analemma along with that system. And so uh, I'm wondering if it matters if someone wanted to put the whole house system on, would it be in any way better to have the analemma unit being the last item in line after the filtration system, or could one install it before the water runs through the filtration system? I would always say, uh, and I always say this to people, if you can, put it last. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, and because then, you know, you RO the water, you remineralize it, goes through all of this. And, and this is kind of... Um, it's hugely important from the chemical perspective and take it all out. But the number one thing with water is water is always going to pick up the most dominant frequency of its environment. So all of these toxins, even though you take them out chemically, the information of it, it's still right. there. Right. That's why we always say put it at the end yeah. because you are changing the information. It's like a clean slate. You put it in this optimum frequency structure and then all the water after it, it's just like you, you purified it energetically and information wise. That's why we always say put it last. Awesome. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And uh, something I'm really excited about with the whole house unit is uh, the fact that I talked to my plumber and I said, you know, it's great that we're going to have really clean and then analemma structured water all throughout the house and all the all the taps and even the laundry and the pet water and whatever, watering the plants. I already, I'm already this, this is what a geek I am. I already use the wand when I fill up my my water pitcher to water the plants. I always structure the water. And, and I talked about this, I think, in the last podcast we did with your partners. I mean... Yeah, I don't know what my plants would look like if I hadn't done that, but I, in the past, have had a difficult time keeping my plants vibrant and healthy. And my plant, I have tons of plants all over the house, big ones, small ones, everything in between. And all of my plants are just thriving and killing it. And it's got to have something to do with the fact that I'm using this water. So that's part one. Part two is I'm like, okay, we're going to have this pristine, clean water inside the house that's restructured. But what about the yard? Like, what about all the beautiful plants and oak trees and things that we have in the yard and the swimming pool and jacuzzi too, right? I'm like, ah, now I'm going to be showering in this great water. And then I'm going to be going out in the pool and swimming in tap water and absorbing all that crap that's in the municipal water here. And then my plumber figured out a way to actually run the entire property's water through the filtration and then through the analemma. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen when 
I can fill up the pool with analemma water and all of the irrigation on the property is also going to be structured water because I want to start planting some food and make a food forest and have fruit trees and anything that I can grow here in Texas. I guess I'll find out, but it sounds like I'm probably going to see a healthier lawn, healthier plants. Everything that's being watered in the yard is going to be really happy as a result of getting that toxin-free and structured water, right? Most definitely. Well, before we go into kind of the whole benefit of whole house and Alema, and I would just like to uh, mention one thing, um, it just crossed my mind. There is this uh, farmer in the Netherlands who actually bought this whole greenhouse where we did the experiments, and he's continued using the water because the whole equipment was there. And and he's using, uh, he's actually growing organic cucumbers. There's really one kind of cucumbers. And this cucumber actually gives fruit uh, 10 to 12 weeks in a year. And that's basically it. But with NLMO water, now for a couple of years, it's at 22 to 24 weeks. What? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. So it's progressive. Uh, that's why it's so important. The more you use it, the more it kind of uh, has effect. So I know that you're going to have a blast with using it and you can actually see it's very visual with plants. I always invite people uh, to do a, one simple test. You can take two basil plants because they grow fast and you water one with regular water and one with uh, analemma water. And after three weeks, uh, you can stop their water supply, and you can even increase the stressor. You can increase the heat or something, and you just watch what's going to happen. Wow. The, the one water with regular water is just going to start shriveling down. The one with an lemon water, I don't even have to tell you, you will see the difference. And even if you just drop a couple of drops of an alema water when it eventually starts to kind of go down, you just have a couple of drops of an alema water and you see what's going to happen. In less than a minute, there's going to be this powerful coming back to life, which is extraordinarily to, uh, extraordinary to observe. I, I had this, when I did this experiment, it was, I don't know, a couple of summers back where I had this beautiful large basil plant in my summer house and I watered it with an alema water, but then I had to leave for four days and it was very hot. It was just summer. So after, I don't know, four or five days of uh, not receiving water and extreme heat, it would just shrivel down. When I came back, it was nothing, nothing, like it, nothing happened to it. So this is something that people can really, really, really observe. Plants really show it very fast. So uh, I'm thrilled that you're going to use it uh, on your land and you will definitely see the results. I'm so, so excited. Yeah. To jump into the whole house and dilemma. So we kind of hypothesize since skin is our largest uh, organ on our body, uh, it would, we kind of wanted to do tests. What would happen if people would just kind of bathe in it or stay submerged uh, uh, till a uh, neck in the water for 20, 30 minutes. Then we connected to Hydrate Spa and Dr. Greg Lane. Who, they actually have this kind of system already, people coming in and taking baths. So uh, Dr. Greg Lane did several tests. He actually uh, did the tests on cardiac output, stroke volume, blood viscosity, and many other things. And every single person, every single, now we're going to do a hundred people study. Every single person up until now in the study experienced significant improvement in the cardiac output, in stroke volume, in blood viscosity. And actually, we wanted to test, we actually brought one prominent female athlete. I mean, their cardiac output is strong. It needs to be. And even her cardiac output increased. And this is from soaking in the analemma structured water? Yeah, 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Oh. And I can tell you one lady actually came and she had se severe issues with cardiac output. It, it was it, 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 actually, they couldn't help her. Uh, you know, you, they couldn't do operation on her. They couldn't kind of medicate her. It was just an issue. And it was really kind of detrimental for her life. First bath, first bath, half an hour, her cardiac in output increased by 100%. First. And now we're now she she doesn't want to stop. <laughs> She's now a couple of months in, and her cardiac output reached normal levels, and it's not going down anymore. 
Wow, dude. So something electromagnetic happens that we're kind of hypothesizing. We knew that when you lay down in water for one hour, your body is going to absorb up to a liter of water. But something else happens there. We don't really kind of um, fully understand what. We're definitely going to uh, investigate all of the pathways. But it's electromagnetic. A heart pump is electromagnetic in nature. So something happens there that when you lie down in water, all of you kind of gets activated, so to speak. We're now actually going to do studies on athletes to see if their athletic performance just by laying in water would improve. That's amazing. So, so I was onto something with structuring my ice bath water. <laughs> Most but, definitely. But to the point of the whole house unit, what I'm also excited about is the fact that uh, when we built this place, we installed a really beautiful stone Japanese soaking tub, this giant tub. I mean, it takes 45 minutes to fill it up. It's so big. <laughs> Probably pretty hard on the water bill now that I think about it. So it takes a lot of water. Uh, but it's I got a big enough one where my wife and I could take a bath. And then after we installed it, we've been on a pregnancy journey for a while now. We're hoping to get pregnant and have a kid. And our vision for uh, that process is to have the baby at home. And that would likely happen in the bathtub. And so I'm thinking, oh, man, so we're going to have clean structure water to take baths in because I love taking baths with, uh, you know, Epsom salts and magnesium flakes and essential oils like medicinal baths, baking soda, iodine, I put all kinds of crazy shit in there. But man, just soaking in there, having a baby that's born into the world with that kind of water, that sounds like a really cool plan. And above that, I thought of something else. Haven't gotten around to it yet, but I uh, plan to get a float tank uh, by this company, Serenity Floats, a guy that's been on the podcast, Max. And how cool would it be to structure the water that you put in the float tank with all that magnesium? I mean, oh, like, man. Yeah. You know, it's like... Again, you, you're obviously I'm a water fanatic. I'm always thinking about ways to optimize water that I consume or sit in. So that's that's pretty exciting as well. Um, what's the uh, the cost on the whole house unit? Is it around a thousand bucks or something? I don't recall right offhand. Well, uh, one thousand eight hundred. Oh, okay, so eighteen hundred. So that one's a bit more of an investment. Yeah, a bit more of an investment, but you know. Uh when you install it, you have basically coherent water forever and right. you don't even have to swirl. Uh, we are going to, you know, it is kind of expensive uh, to create for us. We're always kind of very mindful not to, our whole thing was even though we knew that, that you know, this wand, we could kind of price much higher. We wanted to price it in a way that almost every single individual on the planet can afford it. And if yeah. you take care of it, because it's very fragile, so be careful. If it drops, if, if you drop it, it will break. I broke, I have a lot of them. And when my, once I broke mine, I was so bummed. Because it's a jewel. You really yeah. kind of have to protect it. But you know, if, if you protect it, it will create coherent water for life. That's so cool. I almost dropped mine this morning, actually, because <laughs> I was rushing to get to the podcast on time and I went and grabbed it out of the keep out of the kitchen. I keep it next to the, the spring water jug. And I was like, ah, it almost fell out of my hands. I was like, no. With the with the whole house unit here, um I'm assuming this mother water that's present inside the wand is also locked inside of this. Is that how it yes. works? Yes. Yes. We actually created a whole line so that the water passes through and it touches the mother water inside for the long period of time. And what's uh, also very, very, very interesting, since water is electromagnetic in nature, we needed to test every single material because it doesn't work with all the materials. So we had to use very specific materials so that the whole frequency thing works. Ah, uh, okay. Are you are you allowed to share what what metal is in there, or glass or whatever? Is that proprietary so people don't rip you off and try to do it? Well, it's going to be very hard because the number one thing to kind of rip off because the number one thing that creates the effect is the mother water which is inside. So you can break it apart, you can do whatever with it, but the magic is in the mother water to create the mother water. That's why, you know, we, it takes one full year for us to create it. And then we, wherever we put it, it works. So that's the, you know, this is 
what's so beautiful uh, to me how the water is a, why it works water is a broadband absorber receiver and transmitter of energy frequency and vibration our whole quest was to create the most dominant positive frequency because we knew that if you since water is always going to pick up the dominant the most dominant frequency of its environment whatever you expose the mother water to all of the water will pick up that particular frequency and not any other because all other are not as dominant wow. as this one that's why it works that's why it's kind of it's simple and elegant but that's why it works because of this very particular property of water so you just take the mother water put it in a crystal vial or in whole house and a lemma we couldn't create out of the glass it just wouldn't kind of work that's why we played with various uh, materials and we found a perfect combination that this very particular frequency or the structure gets transmitted to all the water coming through got it so if one had installed the whole house filter then i mean not filter but the whole house unit that is obviously just going to last forever. And yes, like, right. That's the whole thing. You don't have to do anything with it. The water passes, right. passes through and it stays in that very particular state. Now we can say for five years after just one treatment, but every single year uh, we're adding a year. But, you know, it's virtually forever. And then when you move, you could just uninstall it and take it to the next place you live and install it. There, exactly. Right? Okay. That's it. What about, um, we talked about ideally installing it as the last step in a whole house filtration system. I'm assuming since the influence of the mother water inside the unit is king and nothing uh, sort of overrides that, you could, for example, have the whole house uh, structuring unit, but say you, you just have a local a filter like an aqua true countertop which we were using for the past couple of years a, a reverse osmosis system so say the source water was coming out of the tap had already been structured with the analemma then i pour it in the aqua true and it goes through the reverse osmosis it's still going to come out structured even after that right you're actually asking a brilliant question well that's my job <laughs> sometimes i get lucky <laughs> Because we did many testing with it, and we realized that if you put RO immediately after whole house and lemma, it will create an issue in ah. the coherence. We realized that we need at least three meters of piping for water to quote unquote settle, and then if it enters into RO, no worries there. And we did more than several tests with it. So we always say, put a whole house and a lemma last. If you cannot, always create three meters of piping in between whole house and a lemma and the RO. Then it works, no worries. Got it. Okay, cool. So just like you mentioned, a lemma water is the king and the, the coherence stays. But for some reason, we realized if it goes immediately into the RO, then... Uh, we saw some kind of fluctuations in coherence. So okay, just that cool. we avoid this 100%, always have three meters of piping so that the water settles. Noted. Okay, cool. That's so it's an amazing question that you asked that because it really it was relevant. It is relevant. We kind of saw it in our testing. Well, after eight years of doing this, I'm pretty good at uh, predicting what the questions that listeners have after I do interviews. And I guarantee you someone listening is like, yeah, but what about? Um, so I want to know, and I know many of the listeners do, and, and I had a selfish motive in knowing that because even though we're going to have the whole house Ophora system, then the analemma structuring unit, also inside the kitchen, what we have now is this beautiful machine called the BioQuantum uh, bioquantum what? I forget. It's basically a water cooler that uh, Ophora makes. This thing is so freaking awesome. So we kind of had our handyman install it in the wall so it only sticks out and it just it's easier to make room. And then he ran the hot and cold water from under the sink, which is still quite a few meters away from the source water. 
So essentially you run water and electricity to it. And inside this water cooler, like what you'd see in an office, like, you know, like an office water cooler, essentially, which by the way, if anyone owns a business and you want everyone drinking beautiful water, highly recommend a bio quantum machine by uh, 04. It's called the bio quantum something. I just got it a few days ago. So I don't know the whole name yet, but uh, it, I'm sure I have it on my website or I will by the time this comes out. But anyway, this machine has all of this hardcore filtration inside it. And then it has um, a restructuring unit in it also. And then it remineralizes the water. And it also has an ozone generator in it that oxygenates the water. And then the water comes out hot and cold. So there's, I mean, I'm lazy. I hate boiling water to make tea and coffee. It's just like another five minutes I have to pay attention to something. The water comes out piping hot, so you just have like instant water for coffee. It's and the and I like drinking cold water, so it's like this pristine water. And I gotta say, it comes out so polished, it tastes like cold spring water. I mean, like the cool. flavor profile, the mouth feel. These guys have really they've won all kinds of awards for their you know their bottled water they make from tap water. So I'm I'm super excited to have. Now knowing it's enough meters away where if the whole house analemma is structuring the water that's already been filtered like hell, and then it comes out of that machine, it's going to be still structured and then cleaned basically twice and have oxygen added into it. And I'm really happy to hear that it's going to still retain the analemma structure, which is really super, super important to me because it's like if you're going to buy something for a couple grand, it's like you don't want to ruin it. Right. Yeah, 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 so, most, most definitely. So you are asking all the relevant questions. I want to come back. It just crossed my mind. Wait, wait, I, hold on one okay. sec. I have one please, more question please. I just thought of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any downside to having the analemma source water then run through another structuring unit? Or will it, if it's far enough away, will it still maintain its original Well, coherence? I would always say, you know, we found this very, very particular structure. And we right. really, we didn't go about it, you know, most uh, other structuring water devices, it, it kind of goes either through vortexing or magnets or crystals. We're using completely different system. And there are various other structures, go to, so to speak. So this water serves, the structure of this water, this liquid crystalline state is like a radio. It kind of, turns water in an antenna to receive this very particular optimum frequency. So that's why I will always say, use it the latest. Like Then, you know, you get the optimum frequency. I have to kind of, this is what I actually wanted to say. Why is this so important and where we, this was also one of the, oh my God moments in our research. So early on, we did research where we kind of watered seeds with regular water and with NLM water. And when we and we measured biophoton emissions. So when uh, we watered seeds with regular water, we didn't see anything kind of special happening. But when you watered seeds with NLM water, we started seeing this sinusoidal shape. The peaks and valleys of biophoton emissions, like breathing of some kind. And we didn't understand what was happening there. And after a while, we realized that it followed the tides. Oh, wow. So it connected the seed <laughs> to the circadian rhythm of nature. That's why we kind of, this was kind of a moment for us. Cray. Because we realized that this water opens pathways for us to be connected with universe, so to speak, with electromagnetic forces, with nature. It connects you to nature. You become a part electromagnetically with something which is much larger than yourself. And you know, you know what I love about this? Because we are all part of this incredible energetic ecosystem and the way people live on the planet we are kind of disconnected between ourselves disconnected from nature and this is a way where we are kind of coming into connection with nature beautiful and, and if this happens 
with the seed. <laughs> Can you imagine what happens to us? Wow. I mean, that that makes me uh, think you guys could do a sleep study, right? If the structured water from the analemma water is affecting the the tide essentially like it's water that's separated from the ocean but it's acting like the tide on that seed experiment and we're yoked to these forces of nature the moon and the sun and the whole astrological system we know that has an effect on our mood and biology and sleep i mean yes. it, it never fails if i have a bad night's sleep the next morning i'll be like oh i slept like shit my wife will go it was a full moon so it's not placebo because I don't even know yeah, it's course. a full moon. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really follow that stuff. She's like, oh, yeah, of course. You know, it's the new moon or the full moon or whatever. So it definitely has an effect on us. I wonder if there's something that could be done in a, a legitimate placebo-controlled double-blind sleep study where you see, because you, you do have some studies, and I want to touch on this, where we know that the analemma water is positively affecting brain waves. Yes. And brain waves have so much to do with sleep quality and also sleep structure right in terms of deep ram etc so that's very interesting if this if this um this structure of the water is going to affect us as it does plants in terms of our our connection to circadian rhythms of the planet and the cosmos and everything else that's super interesting yeah, definitely. I mean, you gave me a good idea. To be honest, it, it never even crossed my <laughs> mind to kind of do a sleep study, but it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. I definitely love it. Tell me about the the studies you guys did with uh, with brain waves. Ah, uh, this is truly fantastic. Since you know, uh, the most electromagnetic part of us is our our brain waves. So we wanted to see, since this water is electromagnetic in nature, we wanted to see what would happen. Uh, when people would drink this water in terms of brain waves. So we did a double blind twin study. So we took identical, genetically identical twins. So it's a golden standard of the study because you definitely can then see what happens with one or, or the other because they're the same. So right. uh, what we did, we, uh, we took QEEG equipment and we gave to one regular water, to the other one we gave NLM water. So doctor didn't know, ministering the test, didn't know which one was which and twins didn't know which one was which. And we were watching the results. So almost... Instantly, as soon as a twin that drank uh, NLM water took a sip of the water, so we have a very short period of time, there was an instant better connection between the left and the right hemisphere of the brain, an instant cooling effect on the brain waves. So this is something that happens almost instantly. And, oh the, other, God, and the other twin that drank regular water, nothing happened. So it, it was amazing to observe. And what we did actually after that, a couple of weeks later, we repeated the test and we gave the analemma water to the other twin. And we had exactly, because they're genetically identical, we had exactly the same phenomenon happening with the other one, while the first one who drank regular water, again, nothing happened. So this is something that, you know, you cannot ignore. It, it just happens in, in front of your eyes, which was amazing. But then we wanted to see uh, what will happen uh, kind of, we did a pilot study with uh, one person who had this uh, a neurodegenerative disorder, which was pretty severe, uh, that influenced delta uh, waves. So uh, delta waves are usually active when we sleep. They're not active when uh, when we are awake. And this neurogenerative disorder, uh, in this disorder, uh, delta waves go up. And they, you cannot stop them. It's actually progressive. So it just go up and up and up. And what we did, we want to see what will happen when this kind of individual would drink the water. And uh, it was a 50-day study. And lo and behold, delta waves started to come down. And after 51 days, they actually went into normal. And this person really reported feeling amazing. But it's amazing that to kind of actually see the before and after. You could see all the scans and everything. So you see the very, very uh, tangible difference there. I'm so going to drink. Really gonna drink. Uh, hang on one second. I'm going to drink some right now. I, I want to show you another experiment. I'm drinking mine all, all the time. <laughs> I want to show you another experiment too. So I love hydrogen water, right? Hydrogen infused water. And I used to use these little tablets to make hydrogen water. And I still do when I travel. And then I found this machine called the Hydrofix. It's from Japan. Mm. Lord's Hydrofix. 
and I was going to put it in the kitchen. And I thought, man, sometimes I get stuck in my office and I just, if I, if I get into a focus mode, I don't want to leave because then I'll get distracted and I'll go screw around or hang out with my wife. I mean, as lovely as that is, I won't get any work done. So I was like, oh, I'm going to try to put the Hydrofix on my desk and just see if I um, end up drinking more water and I find it useful. And I have. So I just happen to have this the picture from it. I can't show the whole machine because it's plugged in on the back of my desk. But what I do now is when I fill this up with my uh, Alive Spring Water or now the Ophora BioQuantum machine is I'll stir this water and then I'll make the hydrogen with it. So I have like this really great pure structured water that has hydrogen in it. So that that's my latest experiment, what I'm up to here. But in our conversation here, I had a thought, and it sounds like I'm probably cool, but there's it's not electrolysis. I forget the way exactly the hydrogen is infused into these nano bubbles with this particular advice. Many of them use electrolysis, where you're essentially electrocuting the water, like a Pongen machine and things uh, of that nature, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah. But if I'm making my water this way, uh, and I'm if I'm structuring it first, then infusing it with hydrogen, do you think I'm having any negative impact on the structured element of it? Well, you know, it's I haven't done the study on it, so I cannot really kind of 100%. Uh, I, that's why I always say use the one the latest. Okay, right. Then so you're could, 100% sure, you know. Right. So I could, so I could, because it takes about 30 minutes to bring it up to, I think it's 1.5 or something PPMs. Um, once it's fully saturated. And the cool thing about this machine is that it it just keeps infusing the hydrogen in there all day it's so that it doesn't um, diffuse out of the top, basically, because hydrogen is so small and it's a gas. If you just made hydrogen and let it sit there, it would all evaporate, essentially. But what I could do is run the hydrogen generation when it hits the 30 minutes and it's at the full saturation, then I could structure it with the wand. Yes. And then you have the best of both worlds. I like it. Then it will just work. I like it. I mean, this water is incredible. I mean, now knowing that it's going to have an impact on the brain waves, which I, I didn't know, that's very open to placebo or suggestion where I think, wow, I'm really focused drinking this water. I mean, who thinks water makes you more focused? But if you're, you know, in a really agitated beta brainwave state and you're out of coherence in your brain and you drink water that could then help you balance some of the ranges of beta or even bring in some alpha waves that would have an impact on your productivity if that's what's happening to your brain waves, which it seems. Most definitely. I actually have to uh, add one study, uh, one additional study that we did. We realized that EMFs are actually influencing brain waves and we did a study on it. So we took several people and they used a, a cell phone for a couple of minutes and we kind of measured their brain waves all the time immediately, immediately as people start to use cell phones, there is a chaotic effect. Your brain waves go into chaotic state and it's very palpable visual so you can see it and it's irrefutable. And what we did uh, after those couple of minutes of cell phone usage, we gave a regular water to some of uh, the people, the participants in the study and to some we, uh, we gave NLM water. And to those participants who drank NLM water, again, instant cooling effect on the brainwaves. Their brainwaves went back to normal, while the people who used the cell phone and drank regular water, this particular negative effect on the brainwaves stayed much, 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 much longer. It took much longer time for brainwaves to kind of go back to normal. That's incredible. I, I don't know if you're aware, but people listening will surely be if they've listened before. I'm a huge advocate for EMF awareness and safety. Yes. Uh, I mean, I've our whole house is basically built to avoid EMF exposure. Um, like right now, my phone's here. It's on airplane mode. It's dark. It's it's always like that. Um, you know, unless I have to use it, I always use speakerphone. But I, I love hearing that you actually saw some data on that because when I'm out in the world, I still see people wearing like Bluetooth uh earbuds and people talking on the phone with their phone up against their head and it's like takes everything in me to not be like hey did you know you're like really hurting yourself by doing that unless someone asks me i try to keep my mouth shut but um it's nice that you've actually quantified that scientifically and you can sh i mean there's a lot of studies out there showing that it's harmful but 
I didn't know specifically about the brain waves that piece. I mean, it makes sense, right? I have to I have to tell you one thing, which is probably going to be interesting to you, but uh, especially now 5G, we actually did a study. We realized really one really bad effect of these ways. Uh, they're actually, most probably we're the first ones. There is a group of scientists working on the project uh, now. So uh, 5G in particularly is having negative effect on pathogenic bacteria. And as as the saturation of these waves is getting more powerful by the month, you know, in a couple of years, we're going to have not only whole infrastructure of 5G on the land, we have, we're going to have 100,000 satellites, which are going to saturate the low orbit with these kind of waves. And we proved that pathogenic bacteria, E. coli is one of them, really goes berserk on it so that's going to be a huge issue very soon major issue that's why i'm such a loud mouth about it you know again going back to my stance on environmentalism i i love that people care about the planet and I, it's like i'm definitely against pollution and harming our mother earth because i don't view the i don't view the environment or the planet as something outside of myself or different than myself Yes. I live my life with an awareness that I am the same thing. So if I like, you know, use some cleaning chemicals in my house and go pour them on the ground, I get the sense that I'm actually pouring them on myself. There's not really a difference there. So my relationship yes. is as such. That said, as much as I honor people that are doing their part to protect the environment, um, there's two things that are really missing largely from that conversation. And that is what you just described, the proliferation of harmful radiation on the entire face of the planet coming not only from the planet, but now above, thanks to yes. Elon Musk and people uh, of that ilk. Uh, and then the other thing is the geoengineering, the uh, atmospheric aerosol injection that you can just look up on most places in the planet and see the sky is full of these chemicals that they're doing for God knows what. And they pretend like they're not doing. But those two issues, like when I meet people that are, you know, concerned about changing the weather, you know, I always look up and I'm like, you guys, that that's how the weather's changing. It's right yeah, there. Yeah. You. You know, <laughs> it's just maddening to me. But, you know, everyone plays their part. And I guess my part is being the guy that's willing to kind of go out on the limb and be a bit fringe and see you guys the real problem. The EMF issue is not only a huge issue for human health, but it affects migrating birds. And it also has a tremendously bad effect on bees and their navigation system, especially the 5G, the millimeter waves. And yes. that's not as much of a problem because in rural areas, the millimeter waves aren't very useful because they don't go very far. And that's where most of the bees are. But that withstanding, uh, if we don't have bees, we got a huge problem on our hands because guess what? We have no more food. <laughs> you know, so it's like most definitely yeah. and you know i can tell you one thing this whole like satellite thing they're actually saturating the parts of the planet which it's not feasible for them to create the infrastructure and then these are the parts which are kind of very natural in its environment it, there aren't right. people there and then they are actually saturating these parts with these kind of ways and we can already see the detrimental effect so yeah. this is actually I would say most probably we're going to have, we have two, two of the biggest challenges. One is EMFs and this what's happening in the world. And second one is um, glyphosate and the killing of the microbiome of the soil. Yeah. Two of those are really, really, really connected. And what I love is that uh, NLM water has a protective effect on both. That's dude. That's so cool. And I, I love what you were saying before about, um, you know, that all of the runoff of all the water that's on the land is eventually going back into the ocean. And if you think about the the capacity that the Analemma water has to restructure eventually waters in lakes, streams, rivers, et cetera, which was once mostly ocean water. I mean, there's a thing of which I'm a huge fan called primary water, and that's water that's created and comes out of springs that's never been through the hydrological cycle. It's a whole other conversation. 
Uh, it's water that the planet actually makes. Like the planet mm. makes also makes crude oil. People, many people don't realize that or refute it, but the planet is constantly creating water and oil. But leaving that aside, let's just talk about the hydrological cycle, right? If we're toxifying the oceans with coal plants that are dumping mercury into the ocean and all the other plastics and crap we put in the ocean, that water then precipitates and becomes clouds. And then that becomes rain, sleet, and snow that dumps onto the land mass and then becomes rivers, lakes, streams, et cetera, and goes back into the ocean. So imagine in a few years, as I'm sure you have, we can structure all the water on the land and then displace all the incoherent water in the oceans with structured water. I mean, imagine the the positive effect on, on marine life. Yes. Right? Like on bringing the, you know, because there's a microbiome in the ocean, right? You get exactly. proliferation of, of certain pathogenic algaes, for example, that are... This is exactly what we're testing now. Right? Or that are prone to the acidification yes. of the water and so on. Yes. I mean, it's all such a delicate system. And I think you're just on to something so beautiful here is that if we really focus on the water, then the downstream effect of that, no pun intended, is the health of the soil. And that also is going to have to do, help us retain water on land and protect from erosion, right? That's yes. the, you know, the desertification of our, of our land and also everything in the ocean. It's so exciting. This is really beautiful. And I have to say one more thing because, you know, as I mentioned, water is a broadband absorber, receiver, and transmitter of energy frequency and vibration. And when you have these EMF satellites in low orbit, they go through clouds which is water right. and they're changing the information field in the water. And we already proved that if you take just one glass of regular water and put it next to Wi-Fi router, the water goes deep into chaos with NLM water that doesn't happen. So our kind of whole wow. thing is if we can kind of create all the water, exactly like you mentioned, this whole cycle, but you have water, which is resistant to uh, those frequencies, it remains stable, even exposed to these kind of frequencies. Then we are not changing. Then we are not having this detrimental effect because then water falls again on the soil. The soil remains, the microbiome of the soil stays intact. We are not having explosion of pathogenic bacteria or whatever. Everything stays balanced. Wow. So while we're thinking really big here, you know, we're, we're thinking futuristic and that's what it takes, right? I mean, yeah, it's great. Like clean up the water you drink. That's a great start, right? But let's just go ahead and think big. If it takes a year for you guys to create what's really the proprietary part of Analemma water, the, the mother water that's in this wand and that's inside the whole house unit, what's the scalability of being able to produce enough of this mother water? I mean, do you guys have the capacity to produce tens of thousands of gallons of it, if, if that's what was called for in order to introduce yes. this into agriculture. And, we already and had everything of this in mind and we are preparing exactly for that because we saw where the earth is going. That's why I'm saying that we firmly believe that Mother Earth is the hidden voice of this project. We are serving her. Yeah. We saw what's happening and we kind of, you know, in these kind of moments, you know, some people get kind of frightened, so to speak. But I'm excited because we have the solution. And I would even venture to say that it came through us. That's why we don't feel like we own it, if you know what I mean. It's necessary in this point of time. It's necessary because it will bring back the balance that we lost. Even though, you know, it's very hard to stop what's happening in the world. It's very hard to stop 5G4 from expanding in this incredible escalating rate. But we ha can have a protective effect. Awesome, and anybody man. can actually get to it. So this is what is hugely, hugely important. And our thing is to bring this to the governmental level. I know it's going to be hard. And, I'm, and I know we're going to have a huge pushback. But that's why we're investing so much into hardcore science. Because then it becomes irrefutable to whichever scientist take our uh, studies. They speak Smart. for themselves. Smart. I love yeah. your uh, enthusiasm and um, your optimism 
you know, it's, I find for myself, I'm just someone who loves to learn. I'm just a seeker and finder of truth. And sometimes that leads me down some pretty dark paths, you know? And I know, like, I know, brother. I know, I you, know, I know. When you start waking up and really understanding the way the world works and who's running the world and what they're up to and, you know, these for lack of a better term, just dark forces that are working against the betterment of the planet and all its inhabitants, it can get pretty depressing, you know? So I, I love your I agree perspective. With you. I agree with you, but you know how I'm seeing it? Because, you know, I speak with a lot of people and people really get disheartened and I completely understand them. But this is the thing, this is what I believe is, there is this beautiful book by Neil Donald Walsh called Conversations with God. Oh, there is yeah. one one quote which I really love. Is like he mentioned there that the beauty and the fragrance of our flowering shall fill the land, and we shall yet take our place in the garden of gods. From the nightmare of our own creation into the wondrous dream of what a life was intended to be. I firmly believe that this is our actual destiny. Like all the uh, spiritual traditions of the world, they've predicted that we are going to have challenging moments, but that we are actually entering into a golden age. I truly believe in that. So however things look on the outside, old civilization is dying and the new civilization is being born. And if things stay stagnant, if there isn't kind of a huge upheaval, then there wouldn't be dramatic changes. And we need a dramatic change right now. But that's why your work is relevant. And I believe that all of us should kind of, this is how water is teaching us, you know, from the chaotic state, Colloquially speaking, H2O molecules join hands, and then their true power is being unleashed. So it's time for all of us to come together in that particular way. Absolutely. I love it, dude. And uh, it's great to be reminded of that. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. I could yep. go all day, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> You get me talking about water and consciousness and, you know, moving humanity forward into the golden age. We could, we could be here for eight or nine hours at least, but uh, I'm curious about a, a couple of things. There's a couple of parts to it. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits, whether you've studied this or just intuitively your, your thoughts on it of habitually using the analemma water for our coffee or smoothies, um, making tinctures, you know, mix, I, mixing them with other things is what I'm getting at, right? Because I drink, you know, all kinds of different elixirs and herbal potions and nootropics and all kinds of stuff. And I've just intuitively felt like, well, of course, I want to structure the water before I put it in there. If we're using this as, as the base water, this coherent water is the base water to drink other kinds of drinks to support our health. Uh, do you think there's any added benefit to that? Like, are we able to potentiate the effects of different constituents of the drinks that we're making? Uh, well, we haven't done, uh, I have to kind of full disclosure, we haven't done a study on it. So it's kind of, uh, I'm just going to share my personal opinion. Yeah, conject I'm 100, conjecture's okay in this case. I'm 100% sure that it actually does. This is the thing about water. This is what I love about water. When you bring it to this very particular state, you are priming it, priming it to receive the information. That's why water always kind of reacts. That's why it's so intelligent. Dr. Masaru Emoto, you mentioned him. He proved that water picks up the frequency. So in this way, you're priming it to receive extra so to speak that's why i love the whole ritual when you're swirling the water you're actually expressing reverence to it so to speak it's like a right prayer ritual and you bring it into this very particular state when before i drink it i always bless my water you're sending your highest energies you the highest of you enters into this water and then you drink it. This is what I love about blessings. And I know that you're like familiar with this 100%. What I love about it, since we're all water, and if I send something to someone, 
I'm literally, literally bringing healing information into uh, someone's field. And this is what I love about it. I know that it entered someone's field because I feel it. Whatever I send out passes through me before. So in this way, I know that my blessing was received. So whatever we send out multiplies. I love this. And it's all happening through water. Beautiful. I've, I've contemplated that too, thinking about, you know, our body mass is depend on who you ask, you know, 60, 70% water. You stated earlier, molecule for molecule were 99% water. And now learning what I've learned in the past few years about the consciousness of water, and that's a carrier and a transmitter of, of energy, of consciousness itself. Um, I've thought about that when you get bad vibes, when you walk in a room or you walk in a room and, and you're blessing and loving on everyone. I wonder how much of that is actually the water communicating from body to body. Like, the, you know, I mean, think about like, if, if you cremate a human body, all that's left is essentially carbon, right? A, a little, a few ounces of dust. And <laughs> where did the rest of it go? It's all, it's evaporated because it's water. It's just crazy, you know? So I, I wonder how much of that blessing phenomenon has to do with, you know, we're in a room together or maybe even right now, like we're on a Zoom and the water in my body is carrying a certain frequency, reflecting my consciousness and my intentions. And it's speaking to the water in your body. Exactly. And vice versa. There's a, there's a substrate of communication going on there that's being done by and through the water of our bodies, not just, you know, the, the brain waves and the energy of our heart field and all those other things that are also measurable. I wonder how much of that is, is the unseen hand of the intelligence and wisdom and love of water. Exactly, exactly. The way I see it, we are light beings. We are spiritual beings. And the first connection where we're kind of married with physicality is through water. Water holds everything. It, uh, Dr. Eric Clark uh, mentions this, and he sees water as a bi-quantum computer. So all of the information is there. This is the information system through which we communicate and correlate with the world. Okay, so if if we could take the source water of a drink or elixir or smoothie or something that we're making and structure that and then make the drink, it brings to mind that we could probably say we don't make the drink. Let's say I go get a smoothie down the road at Sun Life Organics. Could I use the wand to structure that smoothie because there's water in it? Does it work like that? Yes. Yes, exactly oh, cool. like that. So you can, so any liquid that you're going to drink, if it has H2O molecules and if you use an alema on it, it will create this beautiful liquid crystalline state inside. So you can, if, if you're drinking beer, you can make beer coherent or wine coherent or coffee or whatever. I, we would, oh, I always like to say, just please be mindful that you are not using it in in very hot liquids because this um, a crystal vial is very kind of gentle and soft so it doesn't okay. break. Okay. But any other liquids, you can use on all of them and you can bring whatever you're drinking into this very particular coherent state. All right, you know what I'm going to do then? Uh, and I'll report back on the effects next time. And I don't have this planned in the immediate future, but the way that this happens is always spontaneous. Uh, next time I sit in an ayahuasca ceremony, I'm going cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask the shaman permission, you know, if it would be appropriate, of course, and never want to, you know, override anyone's um, rituals or anything. But I'm going to take my wand and I'm going to stir that ayahuasca. That see, would be so brilliant. Yeah. Please, please let yeah. me know. Yeah. That would I mean, be brilliant. Ayahuasca on its own in the right context, set setting and all that uh, works wonders, but Imagine if it was coherent also. I can just never leave well enough alone, basically. You know, it's <laughs> like anything I can optimize. I'm just, it's just the geek little pseudoscientist in my mind that's like, yeah, it's good now, but what if you did this other thing to it? So I will try that and I'm going to report back to you. Awesome. Um, 
I think we covered just about everything I want to cover today, Mario. This was um, by far exceeded my expectations. I knew we were going to have a great chat, and uh, we went way above and beyond that. Uh, the only thing I think we didn't get into in great detail, but is probably inferred by the rest of the conversation, is the impact on animals. And I'm really excited um, to now be able to have all the water our dog and cat drink be structured. Yes. Sometimes it is, sometimes it is, and I don't always remember. But now that I know the whole house system is going to be doing that, and it's going to be clean water, they're going to be drinking that. And I want to do an experiment. I don't know, I'm, going to try, I'm just reminding myself of the various little funny experiments I want to do. It's really hot here where I live in Texas uh, a lot of the time. And so if I take the dog for a walk, she's just dying for water when we get back in. I'm going to take two identical bowls when she's super thirsty, and I'm going to pour some analemma water in one and regular water in the other and see which one she goes for. Please do, because uh, we already have people reported this big time. So oh, cool. the, the, one colleague of mine, she has a cat at her house. And she's actually experimented with, with this kind of thing almost like for a while, almost every single day she kind of played with it. And her cat avoided uh, her regular water and went for an lemon water. So it's really interesting. Awesome. It would be really interesting. Please, please report back. But anyhow, our animal studies, since Dr. Eric Larker is a veterinarian, he's a holistic veterinarian for many, many, many years now. So, and he has a big clinic in the Netherlands treating animals. So... There, you know, there is really a lot of experience there, and we are now uh, actually in the middle of a pretty large study on where we're measuring health of animals. But I, I'm just going to give you one, one small uh, story. Uh, there was uh, one lady that uh, she had pig farm in the Netherlands, and she had loads of issues with health of animals inside. Uh, the stable. And uh, she did various classic veter veterinary uh, ways with uh, medicines and everything, but nothing seemed to help. And she asked Eric uh, for help. And he just gave her the analemma. And actually, he just gave her the stick. So she was creating all the water. And so uh, all of the animals in the stable drank the water. And after month, month and a half, almost all diseases went out. Really? Oh, the stable. So this is, you know, what's what I love about animals is you don't have placebo. Totally. Yeah. Either it works or it doesn't. Yeah. So this is kind of a lovely thing with, with animals. You don't have to. Now we're actually going to do also biological age of animals. We're doing DNA methylation and all of these other tests. So we are also into animal health doing Various, various, various studies. So yeah. Oh man, that that's really exciting. You know, I'm just I mentioned my trip to Costa Rica uh, a mm. little while ago, and I that was just last week. And so I, I kind of have a renewed passion around regenerative agriculture and um, more broadly uh, environmentalism. You know, just kind of like, huh, I wonder if there is anything I can contribute. And so we're down on this farm, as I said, and they have some livestock there, maybe, I don't know, 15 head of cattle and a couple ponies and things like that. But I'm thinking about agricultural, agricultural operations with livestock and how this could impact them. Because one of the main problems, obviously, is if you're not doing regenerative agriculture with the livestock, then that necessitates antibiotics and all these other toxic. Exactly. And, yeah you know, just things that aren't good for the animals and ultimately for the people that eat the animals. So I'm, I'm wondering about the future of this too in the agricultural setting in terms of livestock of having uh, ranchers and operations not be shocked by having to remove those other pharmaceutical inputs, but perhaps over time, some of them could just start changing the water without even going organic or regenerative and start to improve the health of the animals and have them be less dependent on all of these chemical and antibiotic inputs. Exactly, because all of the antibiotics, it's the same thing. Everything comes back to microbiome. If you restore the microbiome, if you create the balance in the microbiome of soil and of gut in the animals and our guts, everything comes together. We are all part of this ecosystem and we need an equilibrium everything affects everything so when we go to this very essential basic level then everything comes back to water 
badass brother. Hey, where are you in the world right now? Anyway, I know our times were a few hours apart and you have a bit of an accent. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually in Croatia. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Have I you been to that. Croatia? I haven't, but I have a number of friends who report that it is their all-time favorite place to go in that part of the world and that it's, it's incredible this, it really it's is always beautiful. reported as this undiscovered gem you know someone yeah. would be like dude europe mediterranean cool whatever you got to go to croatia and i just you know for some reason haven't gotten around to it but yeah yeah we have we have over a thousand islands and our coast is just amazing so yeah please come you're gonna have a blast so that's what that's why you have a summer home because i'm assuming the winters there can be rough yeah, I mean, I have a I have a house on beautiful island of Pog, and it's wonderful there. It's just, cool. just beautiful. Cool. Please come. I would like to. Uh, if you come to Croatia, please uh, give me a call. I would love to kind of be your host or at least take you to Thank dinner. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're the only Croatian I know, so you'd be the first one I call. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'll yeah. do a great itinerary for you. So our whole manufacturing and everything is in the Netherlands. Got it. And everything is there. But you know, I'm Croatian. And since I, you know, I have a lot of international experience and in doing all kinds of works both in Europe and America. So it kind of happened that uh, I'm running things from here. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Well, thank you so much for your generosity of time today. I got to cover every single nuanced question I could ever think of and then some. So I, I appreciate it. I love interviewing people and they're willing to just go deep and like geek out with me because there's few things worse as a podcaster than ending a recording and going, oh man, we forgot to talk about X, <laughs> Y, and Z. Or that the person's like, hey, I only have an hour. I got to go. You know, And I'm like, ah, I can't do it in an hour. I'm too curious. I'm too passionate and curious. So thank you for indulging me. I have to tell you one thing. You know, I it was a huge pleasure for me because this is exactly how I like, like to do. I like to keep it spontaneous. I don't have anything kind of prepared. So a podcast with me always depend on kind of getting the vibe. And I love your vibe. I love your enthusiasm. I love your passion. And this is exactly how we all should be in a way. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, living life and be really curious about things. Because if you're curious, then we'll get to the bottom of things. Yes, we will. Well, I can't wait to see what you guys are up to next and uh, look forward to chatting with you again. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much for having me.